Hi, this is Chief Education Officer Bill Olson. Welcome to another School District Update. Well, this is being filmed at the end of March. Uh, it's amazing how quickly the school year is proceeding forward. It's only a few months remaining and I have a lot to re report to you today. A lot of exciting things, things that our students and staff are involved with that uh, bring great pride to the school system, that bring, bring great energy to all of us. First of all, uh, I will tell you that the school board uh, recently approved the calendar for the 2023-2024 school year. I know this is the time of year that a lot of parents and staff are looking at the calendar for the following school year so they can make travel plans, vacation plans. Uh, so that is available now online. Uh, I want to thank the school board for approving that. I want to thank the calendar committee. We had about a 12-member calendar committee of uh, teachers, administrators uh, that worked with us and uh, took a look at what we need to accomplish next year uh, in terms of um, our academic requirements, taking a look at our professional development requirements for next year, and putting together, developing a calendar that meets the needs of students and staff for the school district. So thank you for, for the calendar committee for that great, great job. Um, some of the events coming up, uh, some perhaps have already taken place at this point in time. Certainly the celebration of song has uh, taken place. That was extraordinarily successful, along with a cavalcade of bands that happened this week. Uh, and that is available on uh, Merrimack TV. We always appreciate Cable TV Network for, for allowing you and allowing all of us to view what is going on, not only in the school district, but around town. Uh, we had 12 Merrimack Middle School students and one student from the upper elementary school uh, participate in the uh, New Hampshire School Band Directors Association Mid-Level Honor Band Festival. And that's coming up, actually that's coming up on April 10th, so in about another two weeks, those students, those 13 students, 12 from the middle school and one from JMU's will be participating in that uh, very important uh, and prestigious uh, program. The, at the middle school also, uh, our staff has been putting together Mary's Closet. Uh, we ask if you're interested in donating uh, gently used clothing items uh, to Mary's Closet, uh, please contact the middle school. Uh, that makes things available to families that might need a little bit of help from time to time. And we all do uh, throughout our lives. Uh, occasionally, you could use a little bit of help. And the community has been wonderful. The staff has been wonderful. Students have been wonderful in making donations to that so that we can help each other out. That's what life is all about, and that's what we seek to do in the middle school, and I congratulate them for their efforts on Mary's Closet. The sophomore class in Merrimack High School has reinstituted and held the uh, sophomore semi-formal, and it's great to see uh, that semi-formal took a kind of a three-year hi hiatus, like many other things, due to the COVID virus, and thankfully uh, that is behind us and hopefully never to be seen again. Uh, in our country and in Merrimack in particular. But I want to congratulate the class of 2025 for their initiative. It's a team building, it's a culture building, it's a spirit building exercise and part of a very important part of a school culture and a class culture. So congratulations uh, to them. Uh, Jessica Cott of the Merrimack High School Library has informed me that um, the Merrimack High School gifted and talented and uh, Learning Commons programs uh, hosted author David Elliott. Uh, and David Elliott gave uh, two presentations and conducted two writing workshops for our students at the high school. And I guess in kind of reading to you what the students' comments were, uh, they needed to say nothing more than, uh, I want to quote, he was a cool guy. And that's one of the important criteria for whatever we do with our students is to make sure that it's interesting, that it's engaging to them, that they get some value out of it, and they enjoy what they're doing. So thank you to the high school librarian staff, uh, Learning Commons, and gifted and talented staff uh, to bring uh, bringing David Elliott to the school for the students to enjoy in terms of his presentation and his two workshops. 
Speaking about the library, the Merrimack High School Library was a finalist for the Outstanding Library Program by the New Hampshire Library Media Association. So congratulations. Uh, those things don't happen by accident. Uh, it requires a lot of work, a lot of dedication, a lot of refinement to what we do, when we do, and how we do it uh, with uh, students and staff. And the library, if you haven't seen it at, at Merrimack High School, has been transformed uh, with some uh, the purchase this past fiscal year of some new furnishings, some new designs, and we're very excited about it. Uh, the students enjoy it, and the staff enjoy it very, very much. Uh, JMU student, Z Jewel, uh, Sojanto, and I certainly hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly because, Jewel, uh, you ought to be congratulated. Jewel finished fourth in the Spelling Bee in Concord recently, and so we congratulate her on her outstanding accomplishment. Um, and so uh, she was, we don't know exactly, in fact, I don't know if she's finished fourth. It says she was in the top four, so it could have been anywhere in there, but Jewel, uh, congratulations. We uh, salute you for a job well, well done. Uh, Merrimack uh, Middle School Principal Adam Carragher, uh, as he always does, uh, participates in what's called the Winnie Dip on, on Pi Day, the 314, where he raises, he gets doused in water. And um, Adam, I've seen Adam do this a couple of times now, and he, you know, if you've had a child in the middle school, Adam is a person of great spirit, great pride, and uh, he gets soaked but all for good cause, because it's raised over $500 for the New Hampshire Special Olympics, and how much more honorable could an event be uh, than to have monies raised for the Special Olympics. Uh, Grand State Challenge is coming up. In fact, it is tonight, uh, as I'm filming this on March 30th at 7.30 p.m. on New Hampshire Public Television, <coughs> the uh, Merrimack team will be in competition, and um, I know that you may see this after the fact, but we're wishing them the best of luck. I want to thank Sarah Campbell for working with the, uh, with the group. Um, at the last uh, school board meeting, we recognized some athletes, and uh, I, want to, I want you to understand that we're not only recognizing athletes, we want to recognize students for their academic accomplishments, for their fine and performing arts accomplishments also. And I'm always encouraging staff to bring forth students that we can recognize at school board meetings. <coughs> but at the last meeting, we recognized a couple of, uh, of our uh, female students, uh, Emily Angelo, who finished first place in the first Girls New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic Association Wrestling Championship. That's an incredible achievement. So Emily, congratulations. And Avery Bene uh, Danelli, who finished third place in the New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic wrestling championship. So um, two great, great students, two great athletes. At the bowling team, this was an extraordinary accomplishment. Uh, we had a bowling team that finished first place in the state with a score of 268, which is absolutely extraordinary. Those of you who are bowling fans know that 300 is a perfect game. 268 is about as close as you can get and uh, any professional bowler would, uh, would really desire to have that type of score. We want to congratulate Ryan Church, who was first place in the individual bowling championship in the state and first place in the team championship along with his team. <coughs> Tyler Bernard finished third place in the individual bowling championship and was a member of the first place championship team, along with other members who finished on the top, uh, the first place team in the state, Ryan Croto, Brandon Fisher, William Fisher, Noah Hutchins, Ethan Schock, and Matt Townsend. Outstanding job. And congratulations on your dedication. You know, bowling doesn't get a lot of publicity, but it's, it's a sport that requires a lot of strategy, a lot of talent, uh, some mathematics in terms of geometry and, uh, and other mathematical concepts and concepts of physics. And so it's very interesting that you can combine a sport with some um, academic uh, criteria, and uh, you come up with great champions. So congratulations to the bowling team and to the individuals and their coaches. The coaches have put in an inordinately large amount of time uh, working with our student athletes um, and in our theater arts and fine and performing arts programs. Our staff is always spending a, a lot of time. 
I want to remind you that the annual report, the school uh, department, uh, school district annual report is out. These copies are available at uh, every school. They're usually available only at polling places, but we're putting copies at every school also. So that you can drop by the school in the office. You can drop by our central office. Uh, the school district central office will have copies there. If you have questions when you stop by, of anything that's in the budget, any questions about it, please feel free to ask me, okay? Or if you want to send me an email or give me a phone call, I'm always glad to talk with you about what's going on in the school district because I want you to know, you are entitled to know, what you're receiving in return for your tax dollars expended. It's always important for me to be upfront, honest with you in terms of what we do well at and what we might need to improve at over, over time. I'm very proud of where our school district is and I'm very proud of what we're doing to move our school system forward and I'll explain that to you in a couple of minutes. I uh, also want to mention to you uh, something that's at the post office right now is the voter's guide. Uh, gives you a little bit of an explanation in terms of what is behind each article uh, that has gone before the deliberative session and the election. Uh, the voting day, I want to remind you, is on April 11th, Tuesday, April 11th. So that's coming up in just a couple of weeks' time. And we hope you'll take that time to get out and exercise the democratic process and cast your vote. <coughs> uh, some of the work that we're uh, dedicated to right now and this will take place uh, over the next several years, is we've started back the work on uh, competencies. Uh, one of the fine points of uh, education in New Hampshire is the emphasis on competencies and extended learning opportunities. I'll talk about ELOs in a minute. Uh, but the school district began some work on uh, competencies, uh, competency assessment as a component to grading and assessment of student progress. They began that about 2013, about 10 years ago now. Then it took somewhat of a hiatus. Well, what we're doing now is the, we are working with the New Hampshire Learning Institute. Uh, they will be working with us over the next several years to facilitate the process of building competencies into our entire school district, focusing on the high school, first, middle school, and the lower grade levels. Something we need to do, it's something that has great meaning and it will allow us to provide a more comprehensive assessment of students' capabilities um, and not only to be in compliance with state statute, but it's something that is so extraordinarily important because it allows students to oftentimes see the relevancy of their learning and the application of that learning to their life. And so uh, we're dedicated to working hard with our staff uh, New Hampshire Learning Institute will be facilitating the whole process, which is important to me because I want somebody to facilitate our work that keeps us focused, keeps us goal-oriented, and keeps us building momentum to bring this work to completion. Uh, we also are working on uh, extended learning opportunities as part of our Pathways to Graduation program. Um, we have hired a coordinator a director actually of Pathways to Graduation and Extended Learning Opportunities. That is Holly Hall, who is a history teacher at uh, Merrimack High School. He has done an outstanding job in just a short amount of time in focusing on these responsibilities. Um, it's beginning in the 2023-2024 school year. We're going to have some programming and some opportunities for students who may not particularly um, like a full comprehensive <coughs> high school experience in conventional classrooms. Part of their education will be in conventional classrooms. Part of it will not. We're talking maybe about 30 or 40 students because we don't want any student left behind. We believe in every student. We know every student is capable of learning. We know every student is capable of contributing in life. Some of us have different likes and dislikes. Some of us like the school more than others. The important thing is that we believe in everyone and we assist everyone in receiving a high school diploma. That's very important to us. And so I'm going to be giving you progress reports on that periodically throughout the next upcoming year or two. Uh, it's very exciting because it, it provides a whole new venue of opportunities for our high school students. And the 
extended learning opportunities will be available to all students. And it will take some time to develop all those ELOs with great fidelity. What we don't want to do is develop programs and opportunities that are essentially a window dressing. They look good, but contain little substance to them. So look forward to my updates and our updates from Amy Doyle, our assistant superintendent, to the school board periodically. And we'll report to you periodically through this program also. <clears throat> Finally, we are working on a strategic plan. Uh, we are going to be working with the New Hampshire School Boards Association with a representative <clears throat> from the New Hampshire School Boards Association. And that gentleman has done, uh, Mark Dolan, has done a number of strategic plans for school systems around the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, you know, years ago, and I've done several strategic plans for uh, other uh, school districts. Uh, years ago, we were, used to construct strategic plans over a 10-year time pre period. Far too long. Information changes too rapidly. And then we scaled that back to five years. Now it's three years. So the strategic plan that we're going to be working on in a variety of areas will be focused on what activities, what goals, objectives, action plans, people involved, and assessment uh, methods that we'll be uh, using to achieve uh, strategic initiatives. Uh, what we'll be working on, we'll be developing uh, the action plan and goals and objectives, as I said, <clears throat> in the areas of teaching and learning, uh, in finance and resources, in facilities and operations, school safety, which is very important because this is a time where, as you know, there was another recent tragic event in Nashville, Tennessee, and we don't want to see that happen in Merrimack. Um, student services, human resources, and staff and student wellness. So seven areas will be focused on. On our strategic plan, we will have subcommittees. We have teams working that will involve school personnel, community members, and also members of the business community because we want a, a broad scale of participation. Uh, we don't want to work, we can't work in isolation because we have to be responsive to the world around us and what's going on in the world around us and all the knowledge and information that we need to bring forth into the development of the strategic plan. You know, we all love coming to work every day. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate your support. I hope that through these programs, uh, you will begin to sense the energy and the enthusiasm that we have for making improvements, for making change, for building upon what we have already in a great school system to make it even better. I enjoyed being with you. This is Bill Olson. Look forward to seeing you next time.